Okay, friends, well, you have to make this. This is one of my favorite soup of all time, a roast butternut squash bisque. Well, it's amazing soup, so easy to make it. You're gonna love making this for the holidays. You're gonna love making it all winter long. It's fabulous. Roast the butternut squash bisque, stay tuned. We're gonna make it right now. All right, friends, why do I got a video for you today? This is my favorite soup. <laughs> I love soup. I could live on soup, you can see it. Uh, but let me tell you something. This is roasted butternut squash. Well, this is gonna get roasted. Um, and and so you can do it so many ways, okay? Uh, but you gotta make this soup. This is like a perfect soup for the holidays, but you, I, I make it in July if I can find the squash. So how do you cook this guy, right? You look at it and say, how the hell am I gonna cook this thing? <laughs> well, you can just uh, poke a couple of holes in there. Trust me, you gotta poke the hole in it, okay? Because if you don't poke the hole and you pop it in the oven, it could explode, and it happened to me one time. It exploded in the oven. Three months later, I was still cleaning the oven. <laughs> so, because there's an air pocket in there. So what you wanna do, you wanna put a couple of holes in there, so you take a knife, be careful. <laughs> and you put a couple of holes in it and you pop it in the oven at 350, 375 for about an hour, an hour and a half. An hour and a half later, you're gonna see it's golden brown. All you gotta do is to cut it in half and uh, remove the seed and you're ready to go. You can do that or you can peel it and cut it in pieces. I'm gonna use that technique today just to show you and then we're gonna saute it in a pan. You see, look, we're gonna get a beautiful golden brown like this guy right there, okay? I already did one so you don't have to painfully watch me do two of them, okay? So look, all we're gonna do is we're gonna peel it, see? It, it looks like it's difficult, but it's not difficult. Look at this, a child could do this, okay? Remember my videos, friends, they're not like the kind of videos where uh, it's three minutes to show you how to do a recipe. You want those, you go to TikTok Talk, whatever, the, whatever they call that thing. TikTok or, or you go to Instagram, Instagram, very fast. You see them, some videos in there? They don't even talk. <laughs> Some of my video people say you talk too much. What am I supposed to do? Just do everything without talking? You know, if you want somebody not to talk, if you want somebody to go fact, you go to somebody else's because they do it. There's a lot of guys out there that do it do it. I like to explain you the why you do the thing you do in cooking. Because the way I look at it, if you know the why you do the things you're supposed to do in the kitchen, then you're gonna do them, right? If, if I don't explain you the why, if I just tell you do this, and, and, and then, you, then you'll have to write it down or you'll have to remember. But if I explain you the why, right? <laughs> why you're supposed to do this? Why are we supposed to saute the onion in advance so they caramelize so they're sweeter? If I explain you the why, you understand it. Okay, so now, now what we have to do is we have to be clean. And of course, I forgot my scraper. So don't go anywhere. I go get my scraper. I always forget something, you know. And now, <laughs> ay, 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 now I forgot my garbage. I'm telling you, I'm not organized today, friends. So here we go. I'm not organized today, but that's okay, because I'm about to show you how to cut this thing so you see how to do it, okay? All right, so now be careful. Make sure the kids are gone. Be careful. What you're going to do now, you're going to cut this thing. You see, this is the easy way to do it. You take it, now you cut it. You take a chef's knife, you cut it, and now look. Now right there, friends, we have the, um, we're gonna take a spoon, okay, and we're gonna remove the seeds. You see, look, right there, you remove the seeds. See right there? You don't wanna cook the seeds. So like I said, friends, you can do it this way, which is not difficult. It's faster than if you wanna roast it. Okay, you remove the seeds. See, I'm gonna, I'm, there you go, I got it. All right, we're gonna move the seed, and of course I'm gonna, again, have a mess, because I forgot to put my garbage bowl, but it's okay, all right? So look, we wanna get clean, we wanna be clean. Uh-oh, I hate to, uh, to have a dirty cutting board, and you know when I do a pepper, when I do a squash, when I do everything, I like to have a clean space, work area. There you go. So now I'm gonna do this again. Put it in my garbage. Remember, never use your knife. Mamma mia. Remember, never use your knife to do this. You're scraping. If 
I remove this this way, I'm good. Okay, so look, we're getting there, we're getting there. Now we're gonna remove this guy right there, also the top. We're gonna cut it in half. You see, look, cut it in half. Cut it in half, cut it in half, make it easy this way, see? Cut it in half, very simple, and don't worry about it. If it's not exactly pretty dice, it doesn't really have to be pretty dice. It just gotta be fairly about the same size, roughly. Roughly, roughly, roughly. It doesn't have to be, it's not like we're doing a seafood, uh, a food competition, friends. We're just cooking at home, okay? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna continue cutting this, Okay, I'm gonna put them in a fry pan, I'm gonna saute them, I'm gonna be back in a couple of minutes, okay? So let me finish this so you don't have to suffer and watch me do this. Okay, well, we got them. See, it took me a few minutes, but I wanted, uh, I wanted to make sure you saw it. Look, look guys, you, you see right there, look. You gotta give me this, okay? You gotta give me that caramelization right there, okay? And uh, yeah, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is um, the mala reaction, if you will for, for um, uh, vegetables. It, that caramelization is flavor. That's what we must have that. So if you don't want to do it this way, or you know you can buy them already diced. Some grocery store, they already got them. All you gotta do is put them in a pan. Or you can roast them, and if you roast them, that give you that caramelization I was talking about, okay? So let me put this aside. Let me go to my pot. This is my soup pot, okay? I, I like to make a big pot. You know, at the end of the day, this freezer is beautiful. 17 years, you're keeping it in the freezer, it's still fresh. <laughs> you don't have to keep it 17 years, okay? But I'm telling you, uh, this is delicious uh, fruit. You can freeze it, give it to the neighbor, make friends. This is a soup you want to make friends with, because eh? everybody's going to love this. All right, so let me make sure my heat is on. I started with the caramelized onion. You remember, the onion is always number one. Always number one. Look, check it out. <laughs> check it out, this onion. I made an onion soup yesterday. We got a video coming out on onion soup. Check out this specimen. And like, look at this guy. <laughs> look at this. This is a leek. Uh, how do you like that? That's a leek. That's an onion too. Okay, we're going to put this in the soup later. All right, so look. I got the onion caramelized, right? Right there. Remember, whenever they put the onion, the onion is always number first. Caramelize the onion so they're sweeter, right? And now what we're going to do, we're going to take the squash that we did, the butternut squash. You can also use sweet potato in there. That'd be delicious, sweet potato, right? So look, put the squash in there, right? And then and put the squash in, we just sauteed a minute ago, right? Put the squash in there. Put as much as you want. Just put as much as you want in there, friends. All right, sweet potatoes, okay? Mix it all up right there. We're looking good, right? We're looking good. <laughs> I'm, asking, I'm telling you, we're looking good. I go, yeah, right. All right, look, celery, celery. You gotta put celery, yeah? A soup without celery is like a day without sunshine, eh? And look, carrots, carrots, cut the carrots in there, right there, right? Leeks, leeks. And remember when you buy leek, you want to buy the white part of the leek. It's sweeter. The green part, no good for nothing. You know what I do? I cut it, and I freeze it, and when I make a beef stock, because I cook my beef stock for 24 hours, the bitterness escapes. But you want to buy as white of a week as the leek as you can find. The organic white leeks are very sweet. Okay, it's an onion. It's from the onion family, right? So put the leeks in there, all right? So like I say, you could use sweet potato in there. You could use whatever vegetables you want to put in there, right? What else? Garlic. Measure carefully, eh? Three, four, five, six, seven uh, cubes of um, cubes. Garlic uh, cloves in there, right? And then ginger. Ginger. A lot of people peel their ginger. They must have nothing else to do. Okay, I don't peel my ginger, okay? I, I, I use the microplane grater. Be careful with this, okay? This is great, this is a microplane grater. It's not the one you use for the citrus. It's the one you use for the, for the cheese and the chocolate and the ginger and the garlic if you want to slice it very thin, okay? Be careful, because that's how you make pink ginger. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're wondering, what is he talking about? Yeah, yeah, you see. You put your finger in there, you see what happened to your ginger, it turns pink. <laughs> so look, look, little ginger in there. Measure this very carefully. You can hear the soup, right? You know what we're hearing? We're hearing caramelized onion. Oh yeah, baby. All right, so look, enough ginger. All right, put a little stock in here so that the thick don't burn. I'm gonna talk about the stock in a second. This is my homemade chicken stock. All right, now. 
Let me explain. It's important that I explain everything, friends. Okay? Like I say, you want a quicker video? Go to TikTok. TikTok, tock. Whatever they call it. Hey, for salt, instead of using salt, I'm going to use a little soy sauce. You okay with that? You don't want soy sauce? Just use salt. Okay, it'll be perfectly fine. We're going to use a little maple syrup. I like Stonewall Kitchen maple syrup. It is so amazing. Just there you go. Measure carefully. That's the secret. You got to measure everything, okay? Uh, 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 yeah, maple syrup. This is delicious right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can rub that on your body, too. Put a little bit of... Um, a little bit of cumin. Be careful with cumin. Don't use a fork to put it in. Put a spoon. It's better. Cumin. Be careful, friends. Cumin is as wonderful as cumin is. It has to be in the background. What do you think? I think that's it. Oh, in the background. What does that mean? That means you shouldn't be able to recognize cumin right away. If you're testing it and you test cumin right away, there's way too much. It's too much. You, you guess you'd say, is that cumin in there? Not like, oh, there's cumin in there. You know what I'm saying? Big difference. Not in front, in the back. So you recognize about after a minute or so. It's about the butternut squash. It's not about the cumin. Cumin is a flavoring. Same thing with garlic. Same thing with ginger. Same thing with all of that stuff. It has to be in the background. It's like a flavor enhancer for the squash. It's a squash soup, not a garlic soup or a ginger soup or anything else for that matter. Matter of fact, you know what? When the soup is cooking, after it's cooked, I'm going to put a bit of uh, bourbon whiskey. I got this maple bourbon whiskey. <laughs> you can put it in a soup and then you can do whatever you want with it. I'm telling you, it's delicious. I'm going to put a little more stock. So let me tell you about the stock, friends. Okay? Of course, we make our own stock. Look at this. Look at this pot. I got a stock right there. I think my uh, sous chef thinks I was cooking for the church today. He, he forgot that I was only cooking for you guys. So, but he likes to give me a huge bowl of stock. Let me look how beautiful that is. Our stock is a little green because we put a lot of leeks in there too. And we try not to use the dark part of the green, but it still makes it. Oh, oh, I almost forgot to tell you. I have to be very careful. I, for, I can't forget to tell you. Whenever you're putting vegetables in a soup like this, you barely want to cover the vegetables. You barely want to cover the vegetables. Let me tell you why. Because we're going to let all this cook for a while, right? And then after we cook it, we're going to puree it. We're going to puree it. So it's like if you put too much stock, you're not going to have a thick. I like my winter soup to be nice and thick. If you cover too much, if you put too much stock, you're going to have a liquid, then it's, uh, a soup is going to be too liquid. I like it to be thick. I like to stay on my tongue for a while. So it has to be the right texture. So the secret is very simple. Cover the vegetables. Don't put too much stock. Just enough to cover the vegetables. If after you puree it, it's too thick, you can add more stock. But if you made it too liquid, then you have to thicken it with like a cornstarch or, or something. You know what I'm saying? All right, so it's very simple. We're going to bring it to boil. Bring it to boil. The minute it's boiling, we're going to reduce it down and we're going to cook about, a four, about 45 minutes to an hour. Depends. I just want to make sure the vegetables are nice and soft and that'll tell me that I can puree it. That's all there is to it. If you, if you got to put salt and pepper, you know I didn't put pepper. I didn't put any pepper in there. You can put a little uh, hot sauce if you want, okay, just a little bit right there. And um, you'll test it. You'll see if it needs more salt. And, uh, and if it needs more salt, you can put more soy sauce or you can put more salt. It's really up to you. It's really simple. This, and then you know what I'm going to do at the end? I'm going to put some cream, I'm going to put some whiskey, and I'm going to put some corn at the end after I puree the whole thing. I'm going to make an amazing bisque. This recipe you got to make. So we're going to let it cook, and then we'll come back in about an hour from now. So stick around, go do something, come back and see me in an hour, okay? Okay, friends, well, it's been cooking for an hour, an hour and a half, now an hour and a half, a good hour and a half it's been cooking. And uh, my vegetables are soft. You can just uh, check it. You see if your vegetables are like your, 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 you take a spatula and you can squeeze the vegetables. You know you're ready. An hour and a half, it should be more than enough, okay? So now what you want to do is, oh, you know what I forgot to do earlier? I forgot to put a little nutmeg in there, so don't be shy. You can put a little nutmeg at the end, okay? It's up to you, really. I use a fresh nutmeg grinder, but you can use uh, the nutmeg your grandmother gave you 17 years ago, okay? <laughs> it won't taste like anything. 
All right, so look, a little fresh nutmeg right there. Let me tell you, if you ever never had fresh nutmeg, oh yeah, baby, it is delicious. Okay, so now what we need to do, friends, we need to stop the heat because there's no reason for me to have it all boiling while I'm going to do that. Now we're taking a motion blender and, uh, and we're going to puree the whole thing, okay? And hopefully by the time I'm done, I'm going to have a perfect texture, okay? And this will be determined based on... Um, on uh, uh, how much stock did I put in, we should have a nice thick consistency, yeah? So look, folks, to save some time, because <laughs> I was going to take too long with this thing right there, I brought my friend. <laughs> I know you don't have one of those at home, but maybe you won't, be, won't make as big of a pot as I am making. This is just to go, to go a little faster, okay? Look. Holy mackerel. You see, look at it. <laughs> Now that's what I'm talking about right there, friends. Look at this. Oh yeah, baby. You see? <laughs> now that's a soup. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh yeah, baby. I want it to be beautiful. You see all that stuff? It's working. You probably can't hear the damn thing I'm saying. I want it to be smooth as silk. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, my friend. <laughs> Enough. 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 I need to take a break. <laughs> this machine is like a jackhammer. So you see, look, it did it a lot faster. Let me just put this in my sink. It did it a lot faster than I would have done it with my machine, okay? So I have it right there. Look, look, see how smooth it is? And, and look, 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 perfect consistency. You see, it's smooth, it's nice, and uh, you want to make it. And what I mean by consistency, it's thick. You know, I don't want my winter soup to be like watery. And the secret was to barely cover the vegetables. If you put too much liquid, if you, so the vegetables you put in, the amount of vegetables you put in really doesn't matter that much as long as you cover them with stock. You can add sweet potato to this. You can add a bunch of vegetables with it. Just make sure you cover them with stock. And if it's too thick, you can put more stock. If it's too thin, what do you got to do? You got to thicken it now. And, uh, and cornstarch or arrowroot, tapioca powder, a bunch of thickener you can use. I know. But it's better if it's too thick, because then you can add a little booze. <laughs> uh, uh, bourbon flavored whiskey. Measure carefully. You don't be putting too much in there, remember? No. You don't want to make them drunk. And, and people ask me, oh, I don't have booze. Where can I? Don't worry about it. Don't put the booze in there. A little sherry one in there. Delicious. I have this Bristol cream. I also use uh, Severy and Jame cream sherry. It's delicious. All right? Look, corn. I'm going to put some corn in there. You just got to make sure you puree it first, okay? Before you put the corn, because you don't want to, you don't want to puree the corn. Ah, the corn is going to give you a really beautiful texture. Okay, so look, put the corn at the end after you puree your soup. Okay, so take your time to puree it so it's very, very smooth. Okay, put your corn in there, and it's going to give you a nice texture. You see, this is going to give you a beautiful texture. Look at this. Oh yeah, baby, this is going to be delicious, right? And then, um, did I put the whiskey in there yet? You can always add a little bit more. <laughs> Oh, you can skip the whole thing. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. See, I like it nice and thick. I, I love a winter soup to be very, very thick. Okay? But you, you put it however you want it. To me, it's all about the texture. Remember, 8,000 nerve ending on top of a tongue. The, 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 the test buds is the conductor of the flavor. So if I give you something too thick or too thin, it doesn't taste the same. So it's very important. Texture is a conductor of flavor. Mm. Oh, baby. It just needs a little more salt. So here. Don't be, don't be shy. Put a little more salt in there. Right? And, and you can put a little more pepper also if you want it in there, right? All right? So now, now I can't use my mixer anymore, so I got to use a, a tool like this, you see? I got to use a tool like this and make sure the salt is in there. Without salt, it's not the same. So you have to have the right amount of salt, okay? It's really, really important. All right, let's see what we got here, friends. I'm going to test it one more time. Whenever you add more salt... You gotta test it. You gotta test it one more time to make sure it's correct. If not, then, mm. 
Mm, perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna make a plate. You can do a plate, very simple. All right, let me move all the stuff out of the way. Uh, just, uh, there you go, Shh, don't tell anybody. There you go, nobody knows. And <laughs> your friends are gonna say, oh, we like your soup. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Don't tell them what's in it. And, uh, and the kids, they'll go to sleep early. <laughs> Yeah, give an extra serving to the kids. Eight o'clock, can we go to bed? Oh, that's what my mom used to do. Oh, yeah. So look, what you're going to do now, you're going to take a, a ladle, right, and you're going to put it in a soup bowl. Oh, did I put the cream in there yet? No, I didn't put the cream in yet. Oh, my God, you got to put cream. It's a bisque. What's the difference in a soup and a bisque? The bisque has got a little cream in there. Why do we put the cream in there? What's the purpose of it? It smooths out all the sharp edges. It's got all the flavor in there, and the cream just makes it. You don't have to put the cream in there. You don't have to put the cream in there, but I do. There you go. The secret is to measure carefully. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's cooking, friends, not rocket science. Okay, remember, we're not sending a man on the moon. We're just making a little soup. Okay, so make it however you want it. Look, all we're going to do now, friends, we're going to, I love those soup plates. Look how beautiful they are. I serve my risotto in there, too. I love them. They're beautiful plate, right? So look, we take a ladle. Look how beautiful that looks. I'm telling you, folks, you're going to make that soup, and you're going to think you went to heaven. Look, 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 look. Oh, yeah. So you can see, this is like a big ladle. This is an eight-ounce ladle right there. Look, look at this. Is that gorgeous? Right? Just That's it. That's it. Don't give him any more. Don't give him any more. You don't want to make him fat, right? And you know, let me tell you what I got right here, folks. I got a... I got a... Um, a sour cream uh, with a little uh, hot sauce and a little whipped cream just to make it liquid enough so then I can, um, I can, I can put it in a squeeze bottle. Right? Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to put it in a squeeze bottle, right? And I'm just going to put it on top, of the so on top of the soup, just like that. This very, I, it doesn't come out. Just like this, friends. You see, look. A child could do this. You see? There we go. Right there. And then we're going to put a little more onion in there by putting a little chives. Little chives. You know, chives is a beautiful thing. Chives is an onion, part of the lily family, and chives doesn't require to cook. So you put just a little chives in there right there, just a very simple serving, and you have yourself a beautiful soup that we can serve for the holidays. We can serve it for any time you want, a roast of butternut squash bisque. you got to try to make this recipe. It's fabulous. If you like it, remember, ring the bell so you get a notification every Thursday when we put out a new video. Gives us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. We need you to subscribe. Have a wonderful holidays, and enjoy this delicious soup.